Hello everybody, Ron Greg, Viking MTG. Here to have some fun on open some packs. I got another booster box of rivals. I'm uh, trying my best. This is the last booster box that Showtime had. Uh, and I'm trying my best to get the, the EV on this is up big time. And there's some great cards in here. And this is probably a total since release of this product. Two cases of this product have opened. And I have not pulled a single Immortal Sun out of any box. I pulled four Phoenixes, including a foil. I pulled just about every... I have pulled literally everything else out of this box. At least a couple of everything else. I have never pulled an Immortal Sun. So we'll see if we can change that today. And <clears throat> after that, it'll be a different video. I have this beauty. Something you're going to see a lot less of uh, soon. There's plenty of it out there on the market, of course. On the Amazon, wherever. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, I could see it on store shelves much longer, so... There's some great cards in that set. Some outstanding cards in that set. So, we'll see if we can hit value town on that set. Nice foil doubling season. Uh, whatever that changeling, whatever that one, brightling, whatever it's called. So, let's see what we got in this. Alright. I was also told by a, by a friend that's a YouTuber, I won't plug his name, he's fairly, fairly infamous, not Rudy, Rudy would never advise me to do this, but um, I was told to do a bit of a bio on myself, kind of familiarize people with me, who I am, because to a certain extent... People know I'm a Magic player. The people who I play at, at my LGS know me a little better um, than others, but um, I figure doing a little bio on me isn't a bad thing. Um, so, I've been playing Magic the Gathering since 1993-94 when the game was released. Um, I was working at Super Kmart. When the, the, when the set came into being, I was a senior in high school working at Super Kmart, pushing carts. Pushing carts and bagging groceries. And Super Kmart had just, they had just came out with the Super. And uh, I was working, uh, kind of helping stock the front end one day. And Magic the Gathering product showed up. And it was the white packs. It was Alpha and Beta. I'm not sure. I don't remember how much was Alpha, how much was Beta. And then the Unlimited showed up. Um, and I was buying them and cracking them. And playing them hard. So, our first pack. We didn't care what they were worth at the time. I mean, everybody I talked to, like, snickered. And, oh, gosh, don't buy that crap. And buy sports cards. Well, how'd that turn out? We have a Highland Lake, a Cherished Hatchling, Swift Warden, and a Jade Light Ranger. Great first pack. Wow. Uh, I was, <clears throat> but I enjoyed it. Um, and then the Star Wars TCG hit the shelves at the same time. And that was a lot of fun. I had a good time with that too. But it did not have the staying power of Magic the Gathering, of course. Uh, not at all. I think it's pretty well gone. Alright, we have a foil here. And we have a Curious Obsession. So, I collected... I didn't so much collect, but I played a lot of Magic. Oh, and we have a foil Dire Fleet Daredevil. Great foil. And this means we have a flip, uh, a flip rare, because we have a foil. 
So definitely Daredevil, and could it be a Air Zor's Gateway? It's a profane procession. Um, I played and played, you know, with friends, and it was just a, it was just a fun thing. Nobody collected for money back then. Um, we were playing, literally playing with moxes, and it was part of the game. And then the dual lands were a huge thing. The dual lands were worth more money than moxes. Uh, I remember Black Lotus being as legendary, fairly legendary, and people were definitely paying for for Black Lotuses. And Alpha, of course, even back then, had a much higher value than Beta, simply because everybody knew the print run was so small. But still crazy below what it is today. Woodland Stream, Forerun of the Heralds, Famish Paladin, and Vona's Hunger. And it was funny because when that product was first released, it hit Target, I mean it hit Super Kmart. I can't speak to Walmart or wherever else, whatever else it hit, uh, whatever other stores it was at. It was at Barnes & Noble, I remember that. But there wasn't a lot of it on the shelf because it wasn't printed that much. And what was in game stores, they were very limited about how much you could buy. Because they were trying to get people into the game and they didn't want people buying them out of it. They wanted to get more people into the game and not have collectors buying it all up. We have a Fell Orchard, an Arterial Flow, a Thrashing Bronidon. And there's a Tulpa, so there's a good uncommon, and there's a pretty decent rare. Um, so I didn't amass a huge collection. I had a couple Moxes. Uh, I had basically a full playset of Beta uh, Dual Lands. A good bit of unlimited stuff. Um, at the time when I when I left to go I uh, left apprenticeship school to go to the fleet, um, I sent a box home to my parents that had my magic collection, what I had, and a bunch of personal stuff because I I was told by guys in, on base do not take anything of real value on the ship because there's thieves on the ship and they will snatch anything of of high value. Uh, it was kind of disturbing, but it was true. There's criminals in every walk of life. So we have a uh, Sea Red, Enter the Unknown, Swift Warden, and a World Shaper. There's thieves everywhere you go, even in the military. But I uh, sent it to my parents, and then I pretty well forgot about it. Um, not a lot of people, nobody really that I knew on my ship. Uh, played Magic. People played cards. Had a few board games, stuff like that when you were at sea. A lot of people played playing cards. Uh, but very little Magic the Gathering, if any. I didn't get into it there. Um, so, I forgot about Magic for the most part. We have a Stone Quarry, Stormfleet Sprinter, Shake the Foundations, and our first Mythic is an Azor. Uh, I played uh, I played D and D back then a lot. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I played D and D a lot. Then I came home uh, after four years in the Navy. I came home in two thousand, and I got back into collecting. As soon as I was back, found my cards. They come up a lot in value. Sold some of them, uh, but not all of them. Uh, got a pretty penny for the ones I did sell, even in 2000. It was nice. Not what it is today, but it was still nice. Jungle Creeper, Reaver Ambush, Resplendent Griffin, and a Vona's Hunger. So we're getting a lot of duplication out of these boxes. Uh, I enjoyed it, you know. It was nice getting the extra money from that. I did not sell them all. Um, that box actually ended up staying at my parents'. I did a lot of bouncing around, and then I ended up re-enlisting uh, into the Army. Worked on Apaches in the Army. I worked on the Aegis Missile System in the Navy. I was an ET-3 electronics technician. And then in the Army, 
I was, uh, it's 15 Bravo now. It was 67 Romeo when I was in. Uh, now it's 15 Bravo. I worked on the Apache. Mausoleum Harpy. Flood of Recollection. Expel from Moroska. And then Induced Amnesia. And did that for four years and then got out. Um, I started... Most of the time I was in the Army, I was playing and collecting. The majority of the time. Um... Spent way too much on magic then, as now, as I do now. If I, you know, that's, it's just the hobby I have. I play computer games too, but, um, you know, those don't require spending a lot of money. They really don't, unless you're an Xbox junkie that has to have every brand new $60 game. We have a Stone Quarry, Forerunner of the Legion, Golden Demise, and a Tonali Summoner. There's a crazy combo with this guy in Divine Visitation. You should try it. It's fun. Get on Arena and get four of those and four Divine Visitations and just get that combo out. It's so fun because you can, you can make X red elemental creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. So those are actually 4-4 four, four flying angel tokens that are tapped and attacking. So that's uh, pretty crazy stuff. We have a Merfolk Mistfinder, Sadistic Sky Marcher, Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, and a Dire Fleet Daredevil. But I've had a very colorful life, that's for sure. Um, I've had a lot of places, done a lot of stuff, I've worked a lot of jobs. Um, I wanted to get around and experience a lot of different things. I've worked a lot in a lot of different jobs and... Um, after I got laid off in uh, 2009, I ended up working as an engineer for uh, for a different company. Picked up a lot of uh, experience there. And then got back into IT. Been an IT manager ever since. Uh, IT is what I do well, and I do best working with people. Uh, I love working with people. I can't be one, an IT guy sitting in a server room, never talking to human beings. We have strength of the pack. Pirate's Pillage, Pride of Conquerors, a Captain's Hook. One thing I've learned over the years is adapting. You have to adapt to the market. And the IT market today is going towards cloud-based and off-site support. Um, very few on-site support opportunities today. Uh, you, and you have to be able to adjust yourself to meet that. We have a Riverwise Augur, Majestic Helopterus, Sadistic, Sadistic Sky Marcher, and a Dead Man's Chest. So we're not doing terribly well with this. This is not going terribly well. One Mythic so far, good Fall Rare. Um, the rest of our rares are pretty janky, except for the Daredevil. And the Jade Light. Azor is like $2. And I've gotten one foil. We have an Enter the Unknown, Pitiless Plunder, Famished Paladin, and an Admiral's Order. I tell you, I better pick up here. <clears throat> so remember that. I'll, I recommend anybody out there who's in a career. Who's found a you know forging a path and and trying to find a career? Um, keep your options open. Get experience in in multiple fields. If you go to college, if you choose the the college path, uh, make sure that your education is varied, and make sure you get hands-on education, not just book education. Foul Orchard, Thunderheart Migration, Charging Tuscadon. And a war kite marauder. And you, you do not want to put yourself in a box. Um, nursing's a great field. Gosh, you get into nursing, you always need nurses. But um, there's certain fields that will always be, always be in need. But if you're getting into something that's specialized, you better have an option in case your field falls apart. In case your field gets replaced by automation. 
Automation today is something everybody's got to watch out for. Automation could steal your job real fast. We have a 400 of the Heralds, Slippery Scoundrel, Raging Registrar, and a Kamena as our second mythic. Need to get a hit here. Wouldn't mind another foil. We have a Horn Swoggle, a Zokin Seer, Charging Tuscadon, and a Path of Discovery. As far as my magic play, I uh, I mainly play standard. I did build mono, uh, not mono white. I built five color humans for modern. Haven't played much of it yet. We have a Sky Marcher Aspirant, Enter the Unknown, Cacaphodon, and a form of the Trash Fire. A pretty decent mythic. Men is still a decent mythic. Certainly not the high end. Oh, we actually have another foil. Stormfleet Swashbuckler, Zokin Seer, Expel from Araska, and a Tetsamok. And a foil forest. So we got our foil land. At least we got a full rare in this box. Had a couple recently that had no foil rare. I've only had probably three boxes in my entire time opening magic that didn't have foil rares since foils became a thing. <sighs> they were not a thing when I started playing. They have a relentless raptor, Neil Tooth Raptor, Forerunner of the Coalition, and then Arch of Araska. Good card. Still worth like two bucks. It's a great way to draw cards late game. When you're uh, top decking and you've got five mana available, you'll take that card draw any day of the week. We have a cherished hatchling, crested herd collar. Dead Eye Brawler and a Silver Clad for Rossidons. That's a terrible card. The, the Enrage deck is meant to win so much fast, so fast. It's meant that Enrage deck is meant to win in the first five turns. You cannot wait till you have seven mana open to cast that card. I mean, its effect is amazing. I damage you. He damages you. You sacrifice a permanent. And that's pretty serious. I mean, he gets damaged. Each opponent sacrifices a permanent. That's pretty good. Forsaken Sanctuary. Strength of the Pack. Daring Buccaneer. Slaughter the Strong. The only issue with this effect on Silver Clad is you're putting them out later in the game and especially if you're playing against control they're going to be able to afford to sacrifice the land and still be just fine especially if they already got their teferi out we have a foil we have a horn swoggle reckless rage or sworn vampire and a galta Great hit. Galt is awesome. And a foil dark inquiry. I know his values come down because they put him in that battle pack, but he's still she's still he or she's still a great card.
Thunderherd Migration, Thrashing Bronodon, Dead Eye Brawler, and we have a flip card, Storm the Vault. This had some serious value in foil at release. I don't know why. I sold one for 33 bucks in foil at release. No idea why. It's not that great of a card at all. I've never seen it played in standard. We have a Riverwise Augur, Silvergill Adept, Charging Tuscanon, Temple Altasaur. I know some people would say, well, just because it hasn't been played a lot in modern doesn't mean it's not a good card. I agree, but it's not a good card. I mean, if you didn't have to deal damage five times to flip it, maybe it would be better. We have an Imperial Ceratops, if it was three times. Arterial Flow, Thrashing Bronodon again, and a Sphinx's Decree. Sphinx's Garbage. Oh, not looking good here, folks. Getting near the end here, and it is not looking good. We have a Merfolk Mistfinder, Raging Regisar, Daring Buccaneer, and a Mastermind's Acquisition. It's still all stuffy. Got on antibiotics. Hopefully that clears things up. Get your flu shot, folks. Get your flu shot. Pitiless Plunderer, Baffling End, Aquatic Incursion, and we have a flip, Golden Guardian, Golden Garbage, even looks like Walking Garbage. Highland Lake, Needle Tooth Raptor, Forerunner of the Coalition, and a Tomb Robber. <clears throat> he just robbed my wallet. I definitely don't want to end up with a two mythic box. That would really suck. I don't remember the last time I had under three mythics in a box. I think we have a foil. We have a Sea Red, Legion Lieutenant, Ravenous Choop, and a Silent Gravestone. And our foil is a Foil Riverwise Auger. With a Hawatli emblem. Wouldn't mind a Hawatli, that'd be nice. Oh, got another foil. We have a Relentless Raptor, Flood of Recollection, Famous Paladin, and a Bishop of Garbage. And a Stampeding Horncrest. What a terrible box. I gotta say it now. Terrible box. Another bad one. Blazing Hope, Everdon Champion, Reaver Ambush, and another flip, Journey to Eternity. That was a good card. Legion Lieutenant, 
Siren Reaver, Daring Buccaneer, Crafty Cut Purse. So, four packs to get our mythic count our uh, mythic count up. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Slippery Scoundrel, Reckless Rage, Baffling End, and a Dire Fleet Poisoner. Merfolk Mistbinder, Forsaken Sanctuary, Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, and an Immortal Sun. Finally hit an Immortal Sun. There's a good hit. That just redeemed this box for me. It's still not superb, but it just redeemed itself. Can we hit another? Can we hit another Mythic? Oh, we have a foil. It's in this box with a bang. We have a Thunderbird Migration, Stormfleet Swashbuckler, Raging Registrar, and a Siege Horn Garbage Tops, and a Sailor of Memes foil. Last pack. Can we get there? Imperial Ceratops, Pirate's Pillage, Crested Herd Collar, and we have a flip. Could it be an Azor's Gateway? Adonis Climb. So, three Mythic Box. That's definitely way low. Very low Mythic count. Uh, but we hit the Immortal Sun, which is a great Mythic. Kamena, which is good. Um... We hit the Journey to Eternity, Galta. We had a couple Thrashing Bronidons. Um, I would have definitely liked more Curious Obsessions, but we didn't get them. Only got one. Dire Fleet, the Daredevil. The Daredevil foil is great. It's a great foil. A lot better than the alternatives. So, wasn't a great box. Wasn't terrible thanks to the Immortal Sun. Without that Immortal Sun, it would have been a total fail. Uh, but thankfully we hit the third mythic and it was a, uh, a very good one. So, and we hit the Jade Light Ranger too. That helps. So two of the top three cards in the set, but unfortunately no Phoenix. We got the Phoenix token, but no Phoenix. So, that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I hope everybody has a great week. Um, and remember this. Had a guy uh, comment the other day that doesn't like the holidays anymore. The holidays are no fun. I'll tell you, the holidays are what you make of them. I've had some of the most miserable holidays in my life where I had family all around and everybody in town and all we did was argue the entire time and everybody was uncomfortable. And I've had some of my best holidays in the military or in awkward, unusual, uncomfortable situations where we made something out of it. So remember, your holidays are what you make of them. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to buy each other cars. Just get out there and, and have fun with your family. Have fun with your friends. And just make Christmas a, and make your holidays fun. So, they are what you make of it. Life is what you make of it. I've learned that over 42 years. Life is what you make of it. So, stay tuned for tomorrow for Battle Bond. Talk to you later. Peace.
Hello everybody, welcome back to Viking MTG. As promised, we're cracking a box of Battle Bond. Let's see what we get here. Uh, doubling Season, Brightling, those are two of the biggest hits. Arena Rector, the Land Cycle cards are going pretty well. Um, I'm not sure what format, I think they're being played in Modern. Let's see where we're at on value. Where's the value sitting at? It always fluctuates so much with magic. <laughs> Alright, so the Will Kenrith and Rowan Kenrith foil, alternate art foils, which I don't know how you get those, are sitting at 40 a piece. I don't know if you can get those out of a regular box or whether you got a you had to get those promos. Um, doubling season sitting at 30. Land tax is at 15 and then uh, it's down $10 from there. $10 a piece. There's plenty of value in this set. And the foils are crazy. A foil doubling season right now, I think it's 100 bucks. Where is it sitting? 61 bucks for a foil doubling season. Most of the foils are double or triple their value. So let's see how we do here. Pack one. These are so loose. And the cards move almost a full inch. It's crazy. We're going to do just the sauce here. Zombie Giant, a forest, and we have a one of the legendary creatures. I think there will be another legendary creature to go with the Guafa. No, there's not. Okay. And what is there for uncommons in this set? I don't know if there's any that are worth anything. Swords to Plowshares, Beast and Beast Within, and Chain uh, Spell Snare. Mainly just Swords to Plowshares and Beast Within. And Beast Within's dropped a lot. <clears throat> I'll pull out the Swords to Plowshares. Why not? Now I finally have my uh, two immortal sons, if you didn't watch my uh, my box. Warrior, Plains, and Regna the Redeemer, and Crab the Unredeemed. Are those having any value? No, they are not. I don't think very many of these, if any, of these legendary creatures are worth much. Chain Lightning. Good on common. And there are no commons worth anything. I know that. First, we're looking for the land cycle cards. They're actually desired right now. Spirit. We have a foil. The Jubilant Mascot foil. And a Mystic Confl Confluence. Not sure if that has much value. Doesn't look like it. Oh, it's worth two bucks. I said before in these products, you have to find your value. You're not just going to find your value in mythics. Not going to make your money back just counting mythics. A warrior, mountain, and a stunning reversal is our first mythic. What is that sitting at? Probably not much. I think it's a Oh wow, it's an interesting card. It's worth a buck fifty. Not the mythic you're hoping for, that's for sure. Beast within, there you go. <clears throat> I 
Zombie Island and Corvat's Fury. Where you token? Swamp. Diggerback Basilisk. Basilisk foil. And appears whim. Token Forest in a Luxury Suite. Nice. and a tide spout tyrant. And he'd be awesome if he wasn't so expensive to get out. Sheesh. If he wasn't 8 mana, I mean flying, whenever you cast a spell, return a permanent to its owner's hand. That's something. It's like Peppery's ultimate. Mountain Spear Token and a Nirkana Revenant is our second mythic. Doubt that has much value. Three bucks, four dollars. So I haven't seen our foil rare yet, but we have seen two mythics and one land cycle card. Warrior planes in a spire garden. Emblem Mountain and the Will Kenneth. So we got a Planeswalker. He's sitting at five bucks. And the Rowan. Nice. So I got the two Planeswalkers. That's awesome. I haven't seen that yet. Sadly, not the alternate art foils, but. Still cool. Warrior Island and Bonus Round. Mirror Swamp. Foil Uncommon Impetuous Protege. And a Foil Uncommon 
Crowd Mentor. Oh, we have a land tax. So a fifth mythic. Land tax. Very nice. We have two foil and commons. That's weird. I guess if you've got the ones that pair up, they give you both foils. That's cool. Zombie. Planes and a game plan. Looks like a good card, but not much value. Yeah, this flu I caught is bad news. And then it wanted to turn itself into bronchitis. Turned itself into a sinus infection, which started dropping into the lungs. And I knew at that point I had to go to the doc, so. Went and saw the doctor, give me help. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. He uh, prescribed some antibiotics so I will take the doctor's advice and use the antibiotics just a sec folks I dropped something I know it's expensive to go to the doctor um, especially if you don't have insurance but I mean, it's not hard to get insurance these days. It really isn't. If you work, you should have affordable health care available to you. Should. Uh, warrior, forest, and vigor. And uh, if you don't work, you know, Obamacare is available, the Affordable Care Act, whatever you want to call it. It's still out there and it's still available. May not be the best deals on the planet, but if you're a single guy and you're not making a ton of money, or if you're unemployed, hope you're not, but if you are, it's a great option. We have a spirit, a mountain, and an expedite. I mean, that's what it's there for. It's not there to... Obama was, Obamacare was not created, the Affordable Care Act was not created to ensure... People who already had jobs and people who were already financially secure. It was created to ensure people who aren't employed, people who need that assistance. So it's really important to have health care. I know you're, if you're young, you feel like you're immortal, but you're not. You have a warrior, swamp, and a magus of the candelabra. Trust me, you're not immortal. I've known guys that died real young because they didn't take care of themselves. Guys who had heart attacks in their early 30s because they didn't take care of themselves. Zombie Giant, Island, and a Sentinel Tower. Anybody needs any of these uh, more bulky rares, uncommons, or commons from this set? Let me know. Anybody wants to trade for any of the mythics or anything like that, let me know. We have a warrior token, forest, and a morphic pool. It's one of the best uh, cards in the set. It's eight bucks. Uh, fan favorite. Zombie, Plains, and Pier. He's one of the few legendaries that has much value. I think he's sitting at three bucks. Or he was. Oh, yeah, he's a dollar. Pier and Toothy. I thought the art for this was a little too kiddish. 
It's a little too uh, cartoony. A beast mountain and a thrilling encore. Three encore, still a dollar. A warrior, swamp, and an angelic chorus. Spear token. Forest and a Bramble Sovereign. So that's six mythics. Wow. Bramble Sovereign, seven dollars. Great box. Can't argue with the value of this box. And the Swords to Plowshares. Finally got one. It's the first one I've seen. Not that the value is that sky high. We have a mirror, mountain, and a diabolic intent. Diabolic intent's five dollars. We're hitting everything of value here for the most part. Of course, don't have the doubling season, but seeing we don't have a foil rare yet, we could still get there. That would be a hell of a box. Six mythics. Warrior token. Planes. And a stone golem. Foil. And a war's toll. Zombie token, island, and play of the game is our foil rare. Oh, what a terrible foil rare! And the same foil, the same rare. Play of the game, I believe, has no value. It's one of the uh, assist cards, which makes it essentially worthless. Anything that has the assist is worthless. You get this by uh, alphabetic order. Alphabetical order. They got 21 cent rare. And in foil, it is $3.48 in foil. At least it has some value in foil. And a play of the game. Could we get two foil rares? I doubt it. Man, I can't believe how terrible that is for full. That terrible that full rare is. Warrior swamp and greater good. Thought Greater Good was a good card, but I may be wrong. Oh, it's two fifty. That's good.
Spirit, Plains, and Mangara of Corondor. Another garbage rare. Chain Lightning. Beast Island and a Corvath Bright Flame and a Sylvia Bright Spear. Neither of those have any value. Zombie token, swamp, and a true name nemesis. So we hit another mythic. Seven mythics. <laughs> wow. Your name Nemesis is seven bucks, seven fifty. What a box. Warrior token, forest and apocalypse hydra. That guy's great in draft. Another beast within. Mirror token, planes, and a seaborne muse. Seaborne muse is five bucks. Wow. Zombie giant, mountain. And then Nixalid. Rare token island and a sower of temptation. Doubt we're going to have much in these last two packs. Two packs left. I think we're out of steam here. Zombie. Swamp. And another Tide Spout Tyrant. Spirit token, forest, and a foil shoulder to shoulder, and the rare is a bountiful promenade. What a box! Holy camoly, what a box! Wow, what a box. All right. Well, that was fun and profitable. I am going to uh, do the numbers here. I normally don't do that, but I'm going to do the numbers here and see where we totaled up. 
and see what we got. Give me just a minute, folks, and uh, 